Hi there. Microsoft have recently introduced two new features in Excel for referencing ranges of cells. These are the trim range function and the trim references cell reference styles. Currently, they're only available in the beta insider channel for Excel, but let's take a look at them and see what they do. Here I have a range of cells containing some random text as well as some blank rows and columns. If I write a standard array reference to refer to those, you'll see that it picks up zeros where the blank rows and columns are. Now the new trim range function allows you to refer to the range, but then has some additional options. Now these are optional and by default, it will trim out both blank rows and columns, but let's put those references in now. So three to trim out both leading and trailing blank rows and leading and trailing blank columns. You'll see you get the very tidy output of just the data range. Now if I alter the arguments, if I change the rows one and put that as zero, it will leave in leading and trailing blank rows. If I set that back to three and change the columns, you'll get the blank columns on either side. You can also enter these to just take out leading or trailing. So I could in both instances take out the leading options, sorry, take out the leading columns, and then you're still left with the trailing empty rows and columns. This doesn't have to be limited to a particular range. You could change this to the complete column. So you could refer to the whole columns and just return the section of those columns where there is data. And of course, being array formula, it's dynamic. So if I add in additional data, the range expands accordingly. It is just filtering out total rows and total columns that are blank. So you're getting these zeros where there are cells within the data range that it's picked up that don't have any data in. And of course, you can wrap this in additional functions. So I could pick up the uppercase text for all of these, or I could return the length of the text. Start by referring to the range. Now, if I want to take out the leading rows and columns, I put a dot or a period before the semicolon in the reference. If I want to take out the trailing, I put a dot after the colon. If I want to take both out, put the dots both sides. It doesn't seem to yet allow you to differentiate between rows and columns in the leading and trailing references. Maybe that will come at a later date. Like the trim range function, you can, of course, wrap these in other formulas. So I could return the length of those text cells, or I could return the uppercase text in the example before. And like the trim range function, you can use this to refer to entire rows or columns, and it will remove the blanks. You get exactly the same result when you refer to the column on their own. When this functionality rolls out to all Excel users, it's going to be really good for presentational purposes where you have to refer to a certain range of data that may have blanks in it. If, for example, I needed to display that, and we don't want all the extra rows so you would just use the trim range if you use it without the arguments it will just trim leading and trailing rows and columns so you get a much neater table of data to present to users it will also dynamically expand as more data goes in fill in those blanks and add another row you'll see that the data range expands accordingly. Given that Microsoft have created this trim range function with its additional arguments, I think I'd prefer to use this rather than the trim references because it would be less misleading to users who may be seeing the function for the first time. 
wondering what the dots are either side of the colon in an expression. I'd also like to see a way of getting rid of these trailing blanks within a section, perhaps adding an additional argument to analyze the data by rows or columns and strip out any blanks or perhaps an option to return a particular value for a blank. So rather than return a zero, just return a a space or a null string. I think it would also be useful if the trim range function could filter out blanks within a data range. So for example, if I wipe out this row of data here, it just returns zeros for blank cells when it would be useful if it could actually just ignore that row completely. Same for columns of data. If you were analyzing a single column of data, I think an Excel table would be a better choice as it's a cleaner and more structured approach to analyzing the data. However, for presentation and data cleansing purposes, I can see this functionality is going to be very useful. Please let me know what you think in the comments and thanks for watching.